Uh, with financial reform here in the U.S. putting a major emphasis on the customer, the law, of course, establishing a consumer protection agency. And with the stress test being released in Europe, we wanted to take a look at what the financial services industry faces and what could actually be its most critical task, how to attract and keep clients. Well, to help us look into this, we are joined by Brett King. He's author of Bank 2.0. Brett's new book argues the banking system is broken because banks don't understand their customers, not because of regulation. So, Brett, good to have you here in studio. Thank you, so what do you mean it's not um, because of regulation but because banks don't get their customers? You know, this, this all started about 10 years ago when the internet first became popular as a, as a banking channel. And what internet banking did is it changed the way we transacted with banks. Mm -hmm. And so where we used to have to go down the branch and write a check and put cash in over the counter, suddenly we had this freedom and control of doing things online at 11 o'clock at night. And it gave us... Some a, would say it's great. Yeah. Um, but this was just the start of a shift in behaviour. And now that we have the mobile with BlackBerry and the iPhone and the iPad, this has further accentuated this, this gap between the banks in terms of their expectations of customers and how customers actually behave. And banks are sitting there going, yeah, but you have to come into the branch, you have to sign this piece of paper, and if you don't play by our rules, then it's not going to work. Mm -hmm. But customers are saying, well, no, hang on, that's not the way I want to work with you. And so the behavioural shift is really the issue. Hey, Brett, you know, I, I've lived in a number of countries over in Europe. It seems like banks over there understand their customers better. At least it's much easier to do banking and shift money between uh, two people or two businesses. Why, though, do the U.S. banks continue to make so many billions of dollars in profits every quarter if the system is broken? Well, you know, banks don't make a lot of profit from the retail side of, of, of the banking. They make it from their propriety trading, the investment banking side of things. And so they sort of feel like, well, you know, we don't, a small part of our profits come from retail, so we don't have to do too much in that, that space. But I think, you know, recently with regulation increasing in the investment banking side and so forth, there's more pressure on them to make a success out of the retail side of the bank. And this is where the gap is growing. And in Europe, you know, it, you, you've got a lot of competition there. There. Okay, mm -hmm. there's competition in the States, but you've got competition from different banking models. ING Direct's been very strong in, in Europe, and uh, you know, um, the, the, the competition on the digital side has, has driven some of that. Why is it so important that you think banks get it right? I think banks have a lot of credibility issues at the moment, particularly, and they need to get back in touch with customers. And at the moment... But do they really care about the retail customer? Well, you know, there are banks that some of the banks care about retail customers, others are like, it's a periphery to our, our core business of, mm -hmm. of making money. I think what's going to happen in the future is you're going to start to see a marginalising of, of um, banks and they're either going to become wholesale providers of product and services or they're going to be customer facing and really have a strong customer interaction. And uh, you know, PayPal and uh, uh, you know, Bank Simple, Square, uh, these sorts of things that are coming now are really separating the customer experience from the bank. So the banks are going to end up just being sort of the wires and product manufacturers rather than actually owning the customer to some extent. Mm. Hey, Brett, can you tell us some of the banks here in the U.S. that do understand the customer, some of the banks that are getting it right and allowing uh, customers to do more things like you would do on PayPal or like you could do in a European bank? Well, you know, one of the Twitter guys has just announced recently, Bank Simple, he's going to come out with this thing. That'll be interesting to see how, how that uh, pans out. But, you know, um, Wells Fargo has ha had a big investment in social media. They've done quite well with that. They've tried to reposition themselves. They're starting to call their branches stores and things like that. I think that's good. Uh, Bank of America has had massive success with mobile banking. You know, they've got a a already more than 4 million customers using mobile banking. But most banks in the state still don't even have an iPhone app. You know, so this is this is the sort of uh, the, the issue we have. Is there any bank out there in particular that you think is really just kind of missing it? Yeah. <laughs> Well, it's, I'm putting you it, on the spot here you, a little bit. You are. Uh, you know, there are a lot of them. Um, I think the bigger the bank, the more that they feel protected by the fact that they're a bank and they've got a banking license and they've got momentum right. and they've got profits, so we don't need to do anything. So, uh, you know, it, some of the banks that have more to gain out of this are maybe the smaller community banks where they already have communities, so moving that community from a physical or geographical location online to a, a digital interaction may be somewhat easier, okay. but the big banks are going to continue to struggle. All right, got it. Hey, Brett, thanks so much for coming in. I know you, you fly around the globe, so good for making a stop thanks here Thanks very much. Thanks for uh, coverage. And this is the book, everybody. Brett King.